this right here has been my go-to commuting bike every day for the past one year at this point. It's a basic folding bike that I did a simple, easy upgrade to, and I turned it into what I think is one of the best value bikes in the market. I know the term best is very subjective. What's best for me might not be the best for you, but if there ever was one universal best bike, I think this might be it. So in this video, I wanna take the opportunity to do a one year look back, long-term review of this bike, things I would do differently, how it's holding up, and of course, how much the whole thing cost and the conversion process. So if that sounds good to you, give the video a like, subscribe, and let's get started. The foundation of this build is actually a folding bike, which on the surface might seem weird, a strange choice, but trust me, there's a very key reason why it makes a ton of sense for this conversion. This particular bike is from Crooked Path, but tons of companies sell this exact same bike frame. The only thing to note about this bike frame is that this is a full suspension variant. Some other things that make the Crooked Path model in particular special is the inclusion of full length fenders front and back. So that's uh, very nice to have, especially if you wanna use this for daily commuting. Along that same line of thinking, we have an included rear rack, making the bike more utilitarian. And another standout feature about the Crooked Path bike in particular is the brakes. They have very nice zoom hydraulic disc brakes on 180 millimeter disc rotors. And the price tag is pretty good, an even $1,000. So by itself, I would say the bike is a pretty good deal. It can stand on its own two feet, but really what makes this special is the upgrades we're gonna be doing to it. That's what's needed to take this bike to the next level and crush all the competition on the market. So the first thing we need here is the new phase runner controller and the cycle analyst display, which connects to the phase runner. Together, that's gonna to cost you about $500. Kind of expensive, but I think at the end, you're gonna see it's gonna be well worth it. Oh yeah, and we also need this adapter for the motor, $22. And the final component we need is the battery. And this is gonna have the single biggest impact on both the range and the performance. I went with a 60 volt, 19.2 amp hour battery from Unit Pack Power, which is a Chinese company. They have good reviews. I bought two of their products before, but definitely do your own research. And this particular battery is gonna cost you about another $500. So that means all in, the bike is $1,000, the controller display is $500, and the battery is an additional $500 for a total of just 2,000 bucks. And once you get all the parts delivered, you have to, of course, do the upgrade. I made a full video on this showing you guys step-by-step -step how to do it. So if you wanna follow my footsteps, check out that video. I'll leave it linked at the top right of the display. But I gotta say the conversion is very simple. We remove the default battery and controller from the inside of the bike frame, and we put the new controller where the old one was. This is the key advantage of using a folding bike frame because the inside is hollow, a perfect place to stash the controller and extra wires, helping to keep the aesthetics very clean and professional looking. This frame also allows us to easily mount the new battery on top of the frame. Little warning, the battery is gonna be a tight fit, but it does work as long as you put the base plate uh, as low as possible on the frame close to the hinge. The last thing to do is put the new display on the handlebars. And by the way, speaking of the handlebars, I have these BMX bars on the bike. I'm a huge fan of them. I bought them off of Amazon, it's like 30 bucks. I think it's worth it. I'll leave this exact model linked below the video. But once you have it all connected, there's a program, the Phase Runner app, that you can use to uh, set the parameters for the system. And the nice thing about this controller is that it's fully customizable. You can run this at any wattage you want and up to a 72 volt battery. Of course, this build is running at 60 volts and I have the wattage set to 1500 watts. And that's how I got to where I am now with this very simple, clean, easy to upgrade bike. I now have over 2000 miles on it, one year of ownership, and the bike is running just fine. I was a little bit afraid that running at a higher voltage, you know, 1500 watts would damage the motor, but I've had no such issues. In fact, if I can go back in time and make some changes, I think I would just put on a 72 volt battery. That would give you even better acceleration and top speed. And speaking of top speed, in this configuration, it's 30 miles an hour. It's pretty peppy. Also, the throttle response is smooth. It's very nice, linear. And that's due to the expensive controller we installed. The throttle is very nice. And this battery gives me a range of just under 30 miles with zero pedaling. 
So I claim this bike is by far the best value for what it is. And if we go ahead and do some simple comparisons here, I think you're gonna immediately see why it's the case. So I think the Kepler is easily one of the closest competitors to this bike. It's a similar price, just under $2,000. The wattage of the motor is actually surprisingly similar, but the battery, this is where the big difference is. It's only 52 volts, 20 amp hours. And again, the battery is the single most important component of any electric bike, and it has the biggest impact on range, performance, and the like. And it might sound small, 52 versus 60 volts, but it really does make a big difference in overall responsiveness of the bike. Not to mention we have greater range as well. So the Kepler will give you a total watt hour capacity of 1,040. And this bike at 60 volts, 19.2 amp hours gives you a watt hour capacity of 1,152. Another good comparison is with the Rev 1UP, also the X-Class, both very popular bikes. They're a little bit more expensive at about $2,300, but it's much the same story. The wattage is similar, but the battery is only 52 volts with both of these bikes. There's only one other bike in this price range that has a 60 volt battery, and that's the Wired Freedom. And this is actually pretty similar to this folding bike. So the price tag is exactly $2,000. The motor is exactly the same. The wattage, very similar. And the battery is 60 volts, 20 amp hours. The biggest difference is actually the, the frame, the design. So the Wired Freedom is a traditional bike. It has bigger 26 inch wheels but if you want something that's similar and you don't have to do this conversion process even though it's easy the wired freedom is the next best thing so that's my long-term one-year review of this bike i think it's an excellent value i mean two thousand bucks and you get this level of performance it's truly unbeatable and this bike has a high ceiling for upgrades there's still more stuff that could be done for example, I've been contemplating whether or not uh, a suspension upgrade, front and rear, uh, that 72 volt battery, even a bigger motor is worth it. But honestly, I think the form the bike is in right now is the, the best value. And every additional dollar you spend on it from this point on is gonna give you diminishing returns. Wow, look how steep that hill is. Is that coming across on camera? So this is flat, hill, very steep. Let's see if the bike can make it. Okay, no pedaling, just throttle. Yeah, not bad at all. 11 miles per hour. Nice. Now, if you guys want to see further upgrades just to see how good exactly we can make this bike, let me know in the comments and I can make it happen. But another option we have here is to retire this bike and move on to a brand new bike build and hopefully discover another hidden gem. I've been doing some research and I think a good bike for the next build would actually be the P51. Now it's not a perfect bike. It has pros and cons. Uh, the biggest con is that it's $3,800. Another con is that stock, the performance really isn't that great. It's a 48 volt battery. So it's certainly not gonna be a value bill like this one was. But I think that bike has a high potential for upgrades. So the frame, for example, is very accommodative to adding extra batteries. You could easily add another two batteries onto that frame and still have it looking nice and like it's meant to be there. But the real highlight of this bike is the suspension. The P51, I think has the best suspension of any e-bike on the market right now. The suspension components are very similar to the Suron, the Teleria Sting MX-4, but just a little bit better. So I think juicing it up to 72 volts would really make this bike something special. So let me know in the comments, do you want to see further upgrades on this bike or move on to the next one? If you're still watching and enjoyed, I appreciate a like on the video before you go. Maybe even subscribe for future content. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.